grace that's set before us, as Paul said, with endurance and tenacity. We know that the darkness of this world is always going to be there, but praise God for His light, Jesus Christ, that nothing will overtake, nothing will overcome, nothing will extinguish, nothing will overpower. John used a lot of words to describe who Jesus was. I mean, he, he called him the Word of God. He called him life itself. Life itself. I mean, think of these words. I mean, they're powerful words. That's why I think it's so important that, that we just don't do certain scriptures certain times of the year, but we have to go back we have to go back to the basics to find our security and to find our safety and to find those things that we know for sure so that we can move on again. Friends, I don't know where you're at in your faith, but from time to time in my faith, I'm challenged. I'm challenged in my faith when I face obstacles. And I have to go back and I have to look at that tree. I have to look at Christ on that tree. I have to look and read the promises of God. I have to consider the light that shines. I have to remember that nothing can overcome it. I have to remember that that day when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, that I became significant. Me. You. In our weaknesses. In our shortcomings. You're special if you know Christ. But more importantly, that He knows you. Our relationship is personal. It's just not a, a blanket salvation that covers any, everything. One day I pray the Lord blesses me with grandchildren and I'd love to pray them into heaven. But I'm praying that God allows them the opportunity to get to know Him personally because that's the kind of God He is. My relationship is not contingent with my wife's relationship with Him or my mother's relationship with Him or my grandmother's relationship and neither is yours. Our relationship with Him is personal. And for me, I have to go back and I have to remember these things because in these things I find my strength. I find my peace. I find my hope because I know in the end Jesus wins and I'm with Him. Amen. If it was a football game, I could bet on it and get rich. I mean, anybody want to take me up that one day that those that are in Christ are going to be with God in heaven? I'd love to take that bet with you. Of course, it won't do any good. Maybe we can give it to the church. You know, give it to those poor lost souls that are going to be around because one day, poof, Pastor Dave's going to be gone. There's going to be some clothes laying up here. I'm going to be raptured up into heaven with God. That's why I put clean underwear on every day. Because I know it's true. And, I, and, and even though there might be some lost souls there, I don't want them thinking, you know, looking at my pile of clothes. I don't want them looking at what I left behind that wasn't right. I mean, if God raptured you right today and poof, you were gone, what would you leave behind that might not be right? This is supposed to be a deep thinking moment. <laughs> It's great to love people enough to want to come home to be with them, but Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to leave home to be with us. Jesus didn't come home for Christmas. He left home searching for you and me. And even this morning, he is inviting you to walk with him, to have life. And then one day, along the journey, following his light, he's going to lead us to that distant shore. And that homecoming is going to be incredible. And it will last forever. I really believe that sometimes for adults, homesickness is more than the longing for some simple times in our youth. It's, it's being part of an eternal struggle within ourselves for a different and more permanent home. I think we have a spiritual virus in us that works all the time that dislodges us from what we can become attached to here so that we may be able to focus on the glory of God and His promises and what is to come. We need to have a spirit of adventure. 
a great adventure as, as the musician has said. Steve is Curtis Chapman wrote that song, The Great Adventure. Remember that song? Come on, get ready. Kind of had that horsey trot, trot music in the background. Kenny, you'd like that one. It was like adventure time, you know? I mean, we need to be pumped up in our walk. I mean, we get so consumed with the world that what happened to those times, if you can remember back when you were in the car singing them stupid songs with your family, you know, or you were going somewhere and you was excited about going. What about that, what about that day now when you finish that last day of work and you got five days off and you're going somewhere? It might just be home. But you know that feeling you get? I mean, we should have that feeling every day in the year. I mean, there should be a change within us to desire that. That's what should be out there looking. Not worrying about whether the boat's going to sink between here and the other shore. Not worrying about how much paint we put on the boat because it's just a vessel. But keeping our eyes fixed on what's important and what's ahead. Forgetting what is behind, Paul said. We press toward that mark for the high calling of God through Jesus Christ. We press toward that mark. We're running a race. We're not poking around. We need to run to it. We need to desire it. And we're going to get shots along the way. We're going to get sucker punched along the way. We, we've all got scars that we bear on the outside and on the inside. But that light's shining. It's shining out there. It's the lighthouse and the beacon that's making it possible for us to make it to that promised shore. I hope Christmas time is special for you. I hope that you always have a home to go home to. But more importantly... I hope that you celebrate your last Christmas and that you have a home to go home to. I don't know when that's going to be, but are you ready? You know, God continuously calls to those that are separated, and he says, I love you. I'm here. He doesn't beat you over the head. Like some of the preachers I grew up around, man, I'd stay like five feet from them. They'd have that Bible. Boy, you know, David Dennis, come here, boy. Want to beat me over the head. Tell me about my sin and whip out that list. God's not like that. He just knocks gently on your heart and he whispers and he says, I love you, man. He said, you know what? If you ask me for forgiveness, I'll forgive you. I'm willing to draw a curtain shut behind you of everything that would have ever separated you from me and it will be as far away from me as the east is from the west if you would be willing to humble your heart and do that. And I promise if you would do that, that I'll give you forgiveness. And I promise that I'll be with you in this life. I promise that I will be with you in light. I promise that those that are in me will be reunited and be together one day in glory. And I promise that I'm going and preparing a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, then I'm coming back to get you. And I can't wait. I can't wait for that glorious day glorious Christmas. I'm ready. I love life. I know a lot of people say that they can't wait to go and we love life. But what is it in life that you really love? Those are things that even those of us in Christ have to ask ourselves from time to time. Is it that we're always looking under the tree for the gift? For the blessing? Or is it this that we're just willing to stand in the presence of that tree? And look at that precious ornament and just be in awe and be grateful for the love of God shown to us through Jesus Christ on Christmas Day. That's what's important. That's where we find our strength that allows us to do all things or to bear all things. That's where we find the light that sees us through the darkness. And along the way, God's going to keep grooming us and preparing us for what he has in store. There's going to be things that come along that we don't understand and we don't know, but one day his promise is that we will stand face to face with him and then we will know all things. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Christmas and thank you for a love so great that even our difficulty to understand you give us Christmas 
that if we really look past the ornaments and the lights and the presents under the tree and those things, we see something more special. We see your son Jesus leaving a perfect place, a perfect home, and coming to this place for us because of your love. I pray for each and every person that's here, Father, and I pray that this would be a Christmas that they would never forget. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to work in each of our hearts according to your will. I pray for those whose heart you're knocking on, that they would open the door. I pray for those ears that you're whispering in, that they would hear. I thank you for this church and for those that serve and those that are in it. And Father, we ask for your anointing to continue to be light, to be in the light as you are in the light. And may all glory and honor be yours. Happy birthday, Jesus. We love you. Amen.